Ladies and gentlemen, in this Red Gaming Tidicom video, we're going to be discussing graphics card news galore. We're going to be starting things out with Vega, which is, of course, the company's flagship. It's the high-end variant of Polaris. We'll get into that in just a moment, where Chris Hook, who is the company's senior director of global marketing and public relations, has taken to his official Facebook page and teased about the card and then we're going to be moving on to Nvidia's Pascal specifically the mobile variant also known as the laptop variant where we're going to have a small update concerning the news of the GTX 1080 with the clock speeds and so on it's a smaller piece of news so I'm going to bundle that at the end of this video so let's get everyone onto the same page as you're probably aware by now AMD have released GCN 4.0 also known as the Polaris lineup, so that would be Polaris 10 and Polaris 11, which comprise the RX 480, the 470, and finally the 460, respectively. But the company at the moment is missing a really high-end part, which competes against the GTX 1070 and the 1080, and of course the Titans. Enter Vega. So Vega is more akin to the successor of Fiji. Fiji is the graphics chip which was featured in the Fury, the Fury X and finally the Nano cards and it's obviously high bandwidth memory powered so you can basically think of Vega 10 as the Polaris architecture but on steroids so a great number of additional shaders we have seen of course the inclusion of high bandwidth memory uh, 2 as well HPM2 and perhaps a few other tweaks here and there, but we'll go into that in just a moment. But, Chris Hook has taken to his own personal Facebook page, and that's very key, and has given a very simple image where he updated his cover photo. And he said that the um, image in question is the Vega launch venue and don't tell the press. Now it's quite interesting because the image itself is abundantly available for anyone to see. It's not a private image and even if it was a private image it's hardly the most um, secure of things to do. Now I did do a quick reverse image search of that image, you know, using Google of course, and um, I didn't find any other references to it so he didn't just randomly go to Google and just grab an image. So that tells me one of a few things. One, the image has been heavily altered so Google just does not recognize it. Two, it's not been cached with Google. Not all images in the world have been, especially if it's been told you know, not to be uh, patrolled by the bots, uh, the website that would be. And the third thing is it's possible that it has simply been taken, uh, the photo. Now, because this is, he's quoting to be the Vega launch venue, there are three potential possibilities. First is he's just joking around on Facebook. The second possibility is it is really going to be the Vega launch venue or if not this actual image to be the Vega launch venue then he's basically teasing that a Vega launch is going to be soon and the third possibility is that we're going to see a paper launch. So a paper launch is basically the company going on record saying here's what we're working on, here's what it's capable of. They possibly don't give all of the details, but you get a vague understanding of what the product will do. The second option, however, is that you would actually get to physically go down to the store if it's a physical launch. Now, what's quite interesting about this is we know that AMD have been working very much alongside, well, for Battlefield. And this looks very industrial slash post-war. So some speculation on the internet, and I'm not saying that it's accurate, because at the end of the day, it's only speculation, it's only conjecture, it's only rumour. Uh, you get the idea. But it could be that this is setting the stage for Battlefield. And arguably, it does look like a war-torn piece of, you know, industrial architecture. It looks like it's been you know, been through a bloody hurricane. So if it's been tweaked a little bit, it would certainly have the type of ambience that this type of event would require. Now, if 
this is accurate. This would give the company, and by which I mean the, comp the company are moving up their roadmaps. This would be a very good thing for AMD, and it would be a very good thing for customers. Dory has um, posted a couple of images on Twitter saying that the basically the main engineering, the the primary workload for the tape out of Vega is finished. So all of that means that we could potentially have the graphics card released sooner than 2017, which is when the um, roadmap's pointing. I would like that, but that's just me. It's also quite interesting because this would mean that the company would be in a really weird position because supposedly Pascal is going to have a successor pretty, pretty soon as well. Now whether we actually see the um, the uh, successor to Pascal, known as Volta, which is originally penciled in for 2018, however some folks and some rumours are starting to push that card for 2017, but obviously it's all 50-50-50-50-50-50-50. There's loads of, um, you know, th there's arguments for saying it could, there's arguments for saying it can't on both sides of the fence. My whole thing is, as long as the damn product is good, I'm happy to wait a couple of w months more, honestly. And all we know, one last thing concerning AMD's own roadmaps. Vega is succeeded by Navi. Navi was pushed to 2018, but if possible, like NVIDIA, they've decided bollocks to it. We're just going to move up the product lines rather than doing possible die shrinks. Now, the thing about Navi is there's even less information than Volta, and I know it's bloody unusual, but seriously, it's like I tried questioning um, Robert Halleck and a couple other folks regarding even the basic stuff about it and they're not even talking because scalability it's like well what does that mean and next gen memory what does that mean is that like hbm2 but because most of these companies are obviously relying on technologies which are based upon multiple licenses even if they wanted to talk about like next gen memory which they probably don't but assuming they did they probably can't because of ndas up the wazoo so all we can do is wait unfortunately and that's the other issue with timings it's like yields and i know i, I know i'm probably going to have on my tombstone it was the yields but seriously like if you can't get a much a, enough hbm2 memory to fulfill the requirements that you need as a customer because Invi nvidia and amd are customers at the end of the day because they need to buy certain components to manufacture the you know the hardware then there's no point like otherwise the cards would cost so damn much and there would be like three of them at a retail store and you get like bloody riots anyway moving away from camp red let's talk about camp green so the geforce gtx 10 series has finally been fully launched with all of the informations and we finally have updates concerning the clock speed now i must say The GTX 1080 is looking fucking monstrous. Um, I can't really say it any other way. It's just a monster. I mean, considering there are going to be SLI configurations of the 1080, which is just... That boggles my mind. I mean, six years ago, ten years ago, if you'd have told me the level of performance even on a desktop, let alone on a bloody laptop... Jesus... Anyway, um, it's going to have 2560 CUDA cores, which we already know, but the boost clock is going to be 1733, which does fall within the leaked GPU and uh, benchmarks that we've seen, but, you know, it's good. It's good that we see that. And interestingly, the memory configuration is 8 gigabytes running at the 10 gigabytes per second. So, basically, it is the full desktop configurations. There are no shenanigans going on with additional CUDA cores, which made sense because, ultimately, the GP104 is already maxed out. They can't max out it further. There is no additional CUDA cores for them to enable, which is what they did for the GTX 1070. And the reason they did it for the GTX 1070 was they increased the number of CUDA cores just subtly to 200 to 2,040, excuse me. But 
the boost clock is slightly more anemic. It's running at just 1,645. I'm guessing what they figured was that they could use the 1070 as like a lower power derivative, but increase the um, the uh, CUDA cores. So it's probably cheaper for them to run the additional few CUDA cores in terms of power consumption rather than boost clock. And this is very much like why I keep telling folks on in regards to um, uh, console clock speed. It's like it's, it actually can cost a lot of extra power when you start tweaking the performance levels and going up an extra 50 or 100 megahertz you can really start to see that power get sucked down and it's like if you've had any experience overclocking your desktop GPU you will know sometimes the difference between like 1200 megahertz and 1300 megahertz can be quite a lot in terms of actual temperature anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video um, I'm gonna get going now take care of yourselves bye for now